Hello and welcome to the next edition of the Bobcat Cam webinar series. Today's topic, uh, six types of stock and how to use them. Uh, let's see here. Uh, the goal of today's webinar, to learn about the stock wizard, wizard six types of stock and how to use them. As you know, my name is Al DePaulo. I'm the voice of the Bobcat After Dark video series. You can find me on Instagram at Bobcat Cam and you can also fo uh, uh, follow uh, hashtag Bobcat hashtag Bob Cam. All right, so what are we gonna learn about? Well, we're gonna talk about the stock wizard. At the beginning of every job, you need to run the stock wizard. Uh, you establish your material, um, you establish additional stock. Uh, you know, you may be working with multiple bodies if you have parts and multiple vices. Uh, you have in-process stock, you may have turn stock. Um, today, you're gonna learn about the six types of stock and how to use them. And uh, that's what our topic is. As always, you can expect fewer steps, better cuts, and more profit. Now, while I get my screen set up, why don't we do a quick shout out? If you can just tell me uh, where you're from, uh, who you are and where you're from, uh, it's great to see all the friendly faces and see where everybody's coming from. I want to thank Bill Hamrick uh, for spending some time with us here today. I believe he's out of um, Illinois. We have Doug in Seattle uh, Rich out of Illinois, uh, John in New Mexico, thank you very much, Reginald out of San Diego, Scott out of Greenfield, Massachusetts, we got UK, uh, Vic from Ohio, Michael from uh, Knoxville, Tennessee, Ron from PA, uh, Tom from Delaware, Rick from Tampa, Jim from Ontario, California, Bill from Texas. I personally want to thank each and every one of you for spending some time with me here today. Uh, I really appreciate you spending time out of your day. Uh, John from Palm Harbor, uh, John from uh, Claremont, California, Tommy from Massachusetts, Doug from Virginia Beach. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we got Robert from Michigan, Larry from Tennessee. Again, I appreciate each and every one of you spending some time with me here. So a little, uh, a little house uh, cleaning to begin with. Uh, it's very important that you understand the rules of the webinar. The rules of the webinar is to ask questions. Any question is a good question. Uh, please try to keep it uh, topic relevant. Uh, but that is the main reason why we host these webinars is to answer your questions. So even if you're, maybe you feel a little timid, don't. Ask the question, we're gonna answer it. If I can't answer it live in today's webinar, I will uh, do a Q&A. Uh, so I'll do a follow-up with you. Uh, you'll get an email to you. Kim from San Diego, thank you so much for spending some time with us here today. Uh, so you will get a follow-up the, with the questions and answers. So rule number one, ask questions freely. Second thing that I want to know is I want to know what version of Bobcad you're running. Okay, so if you're running version 29, write 29. If you're on version 30, write V30. What if you don't have Bobcad? I mean, it would be a shame, but if you didn't have Bobcad, uh, go ahead and just say, I don't have Bobcad. That would be just fine. I know we have a lot of V30 customers in here. We got some V6 customers. Um, version 29. <laughs> <laughs> version uh, 30 through version 29. Uh, Mike's got a version 36. That's pretty cool. So it's just really important to, for us to understand what version of the software you use, you're using. If you're not using Bobcad, go ahead and let us know that as well. Um, let's see here. If this is your first webinar, uh, if this is the first webinar that you've attended, say if you could write in the question and uh, answer section, just write, this is my first webinar. That would be great. I'd really appreciate it. 8675309. All right. <laughs> uh, very good. Uh, who, who was that there? That was Rick. I like it. First webinar. Hey, Doug, or I'm sorry, Dwayne, uh, thank you so much for joining us here today. If it is your first webinar, uh, I hope that you join many of the webinars that we plan on hosting this year. We have a bunch of really good topics coming up. Uh, let's see here. We got five types of drilling, uh, five solid editing tools, six types of geometry editing, seven types of pockets, how to use them, three types of profiles, one 3D roughing tool path that you must know. So look out for those topics. They'll be coming here shortly. Uh, for today, what we want to talk about is the stock wizard. Let me um, Let me just drop a file on the screen here. This is, uh, this is a DXF file that I'm working with, and uh, we want to review the different types of stock 
uh, that you guys may run into. So first off, before you guys can, if you're new to Bobcat or, or if you uh, you know have been using Bobcat, yes, we require you uh, to create a job. Uh, in the process of creating a job, you will need to run the stock wizard, okay? Uh, I'm going to stop right here because I always skip this section. Um, what is the work piece? Uh, people uh, sometimes wonder what the work piece is. It does give you the ability to select a solid model as your work piece. Your work piece would be the part model that you're working with. Uh, the reason why you can select your work piece is for simulation and some of the drilling um, uh, options that we have in the software. Okay, so. I, uh, you know, the work piece, uh, I'm not going to, I don't have a work piece to select on in this particular file. If you're running with the DXF, you're not going to have a work piece. But when we get into some of the other models, we will select the work piece. So what is the work piece? The work piece is the part model that you're working with. Vic's got a question. Really joins these one or three and one for Can you hit on something to turn into a 3D solid shape? I'll see if I can get into some uh, design work uh uh, later in the, the webinar, Vic, so when it comes towards the end, uh, make sure to bring that topic back up. All right, so in this example, I am, as usual, going to skip the work piece, and then we're going to look at our stock types. You know, there's one, two, three, four, five, six different stock types that you can work with. Um, we're going to go through pretty much all of them here today. Uh, once you pick your uh, stock type, you're going to advance through, uh, depending on uh, what uh, stock that you're using there are different questions that you're going to need to answer okay so before I get through the the wireframe example here I do want to talk about a couple of things uh, after you've set up a job if you want to change your stock you can right click on the stock and go to stock wizard and that will restart the process so you can start over Grant's got a question uh, uh, where a work file template in Bobcat so some users, they don't want to have to run the stock wizard every time. Uh, what I recommend you do is you run a stock wizard, you save the file as a starter file, and then you merge your geometry in from there. We'll get to that a little later, uh, Grant. Uh, generally, when you're creating a new file, you're going to start from scratch, but you can open a file. If you have uh, a generic starter file set up, uh, you could already have your stock set up. All right. Let me get back to where I was here. Okay, so we got our work piece. That's your part model if you have a, a solid model. You have your stock type. Uh, these are the different shapes. You have rectangular, cylindrical, wireframe, solid model, uh, STL. So a solid model and an STL is a similar concept, uh, just different types of geometry. And the last one here is a revolve profile. Okay, uh, you're going to have the stock definition. When you pick through these, you'll have a stock definition. And then you're also going to have the machine setup, which is your origin or your touch off position. OK, now in your stock section here, if you right click on this, if you want to change the color of the stock, uh, you can choose any color that you have. Custom colors or the basic colors. That way you can set the color of the stock uh, to the color that you may want. Uh, the other thing you can do is if you right click on stock and you go to transparency, you can set what the default transparency is. Uh, personally, I like the stock to be more ghosted out. Uh, so I like it to be very, uh, the transparency to be very high. Uh, but if you bring this back to a, 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 a lower transparency, and you set that, you'll notice that the stock will be quite a bit darker, okay? So depending on what you're comfortable with, you'll choose what transparency works best for you. So you can set the, co the stock color, you can set the stock transparency, and then the other thing you can do as well is if you right click on the stock, you can also choose blank. Uh, this way you can hide the stock. If you don't want to see the stock, uh, you can hide the stock, all right? All right, so these are some of the different stock settings. Now, in this example, I'm starting out with a wireframe drawing. Um, <clears throat> there are all these different types of stock. What stock would I use for a wireframe drawing? Well, really, we could use wireframe or we could use rectangular. And that's really the idea of today's webinar is to go through some of the different options in the way that they work. Michael has a question. Is the transparency able to be set as a default as light? Yes, it is, Michael, if you're running the version. 
uh, I think maybe 29, uh, maybe 28 had it. I know it, it is something that we had requested and, and it has been added in the software. Uh, so we're gonna go to transparency. We can set what the level of transparency you want is. And right here where it says set default, that will become your default. Um, Rick has a question, pick geometry. Okay, so let's let's go through this. We have this uh, this DXF file here, okay? And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through the stock wizard. So we'll go, uh, let me unblank the stock. I'm gonna right click on the stock and go through the stock wizard. And uh, the first one I'm going to actually pick is going to be wireframe. Okay, so when when would you use wireframe uh, as your stock type? Okay, you could use wireframe as your stock type uh, when you have geometry that is wireframe geometry that would represent your stock. Okay, Rick, it's one thing that you can do here. Okay, and when you go to pick geometry, what this allows you to do. If you look in the the lower portion of the screen here, let me uh, let me kind of bring this arrow down here. Right here, you're going to see some information. It's in this yellow bar at the bottom, and that is going to tell you uh, what you should or could be doing. Uh, it, it's not always the best directions, but it is direction. Okay, so uh, this is telling us drag a window or chain select one or more entities. Right click and OK. Basically, it's telling us to select okay so because we chose wireframe we're going to select wireframe and what we can do is we can click on the wireframe now normally i would chain select this i would shift left click it uh, this one's broken up a little bit so i'm going to just click around it uh, once i click around it i'm going to hit my space bar to lock it in and there you can see we have our wireframe stock so I opened up a DXF file, it had a top view, a, a front view, an ISO view, it had a border box. Um, I, didn't, I did not want to uh, use those outside shapes. I wanted to pick uh, the, the wireframe that I wanted to use for my stock. So I chose pick geometry and I selected around it, okay? Now when we look at our options for wireframe, pick geometry allows you to pick your geometry. Let's, um, let's uh, pick geometry again. Let's see if we pick uh, one of these other sections here as such. There's a couple breakthroughs here, so we'll select them individually. And then I'll hit my space bar, and you can see that shape is now selected as my stock geometry. If I do pick geometry and I select these edges again, okay, and we'll select through here. When would you use wireframe? I, I mean, I generally think of using wireframe if I had, um, you know, like a water jet. Uh, profile or some other I had a sketch you know some wireframe that represented my stock I would use that uh, as my stock type it's not something that I use all that often uh, wireframe stock but there are cases where it does come in handy in this case I'm selecting two chains and you can see you can select two chains when using pick geometry all right so if you're using the wireframe stock you're gonna select wireframe geometry that represents your stock and you are able to select multiple shapes to set up your stock okay all right now the other thing you have here is you have top of stock and height this allows you to change where the top of stock would be I can make it higher or lower um, the height here I could change what the height of the stock is so I could make it uh, shallower or I could make it greater uh, and again when you're picking your uh, your top of stock you could enter it or you could pick off the geometry so I could choose pick and pick off the geometry that way it will measure it for you okay so that is um, the first part here so we picked our geometry we set the top of stock we have adjusted the height as needed um, the other one you have here is stock orientation now if we look at our part geometry uh, from a top view uh, really that would be the orientation so the extrusion direction would be Z um, it is possible that you could have wireframe uh, in a YZ uh, or Z uh, X plane and be able to change the extrusion direction. So instead of it extruding in uh, Z, you could set it to extrude in Y or you could ex set it to extrude in X. Um, in this example, it, it's not going to make sense because the geometry is in the XY plane, uh, but it does allow you to 
uh, choose geometry that may be in a different plane and be able to extrude in that plane. Uh, some of you may be wondering what the stock orientation is here. So we have stock orientation. We can set uh, which uh, extrusion direction. And then you also have some uh, axis uh, X direction, Y direction, Z direction. This is when you're trying to align your stock to geometry that is not flat in the XY plane. You can align it uh, uh, using these uh, alignment tools. You can align it X, Y, and Z. This example uh, does not apply to that. You're breaking up. Is that a problem on my side? Uh, my sound looks pretty good. So yeah, Ron, it's probably um, it's probably your internet connection. So I'm sorry about that. Uh, maybe Starbucks might have a better connection. I'm not sure. Okay. So, all right. So that, uh, those are the, the topics that I wanted to cover on the wireframe. You can pick your geometry. You can set your top of stock. You can set your height. Um, and you can also control your extrusion direction and, uh, be able to change whether it's in Z in X or Y. And then you also have some alignment tools. If you're dealing with stock that is, um, uh, not, or if you're dealing with uh, geometry that's not flat in a typical plane and you're trying to align your stock to that geometry. All right, if there's any questions about that, go ahead and fire away. Uh, otherwise, we're going to move on to the next one. Are you working in scale, Grant? Uh, asked a question. Um, uh, this part geometry, yes, is in scale. Uh, personally, uh, if you go to preferences and setting uh, default or part, uh, you do have the ability to turn your axis uh, display on or off. Uh, so this way you can see uh, the axis lines. Uh, generally, I turn those off. I like uh, more of a, a paper space uh, type environment. It just makes it a little easier for me to view. Okay. All right. So that's the first one. Uh, wireframe stock. Generally, I'm going to use wireframe stock if I have wireframe that re represents my stock geometry, uh, something that I may have pre-machined sent out to get water jet or plasma, or if I'm just working with DXF files. Uh, if I go, if I start this over from the beginning, if I run the stock wizard, it defaults to rectangular. If you choose rectangular, it would pick up uh, all of the geometry that's on the screen. Okay. I don't want to pick up all the geometry on the screen. I want to be able to isolate and just pick uh, a section of the geometry that would represent my stock. Okay, one way that you can do that is by using the wireframe uh, stock type. Let's see here. Michael had a question. If you if you are machining a casting, how do you set uh, the stock? If you're machining a casting and you have a model for the stock, Michael, uh, we would use a solid model or an STL. All right. So what I'm going to do here? Let me uh, close this file here. Uh, let me close this one as well. Uh, let me close that one too. Let's look at file number two that I have. Uh, the next file here I have is uh, of a of a uh, a part here. This is one that we use for the uh, the mill premium edge breaking when you're edge breaking in uh, three axis. This uh, this chamfer here we needed to break this edge and we use the the mill premium toolpath for that. Uh, the stock geometry that I'm using for this one is going to be cylindrical. So let's go back in here under stock geometry. Uh, we have this set to cylindrical. This would be if you're dealing with bar stock or just round stock in general. We're going to go ahead and advance here. Now, the first one that you're going to look at is the bounding box. But let me, uh, let me cancel this for a second. Uh, let me turn my transparency down. Okay. All right. We'll go back to a top view. And we'll get into the stock wizard. So we have cylindrical stock here. We're going to advance. Um, the first one is the bounding box. Uh, when using the bounding box, uh, you can see we're missing some of this geometry here. Uh, if we go to uh, auto from workspace, you can see we're getting the geometry. But uh, you're going to see that. Uh, let me let me actually start over from the beginning because I already had some stock set up here. So let me kill this and start over so we can see exactly what I'm trying to show you here. Okay, so we're doing a milling job on a three axis machine. We're gonna choose cylindrical stock, we'll choose next. Okay, so the first option under cylindrical stock is the bounding box, okay? So the bounding box, what that does is it looks at the geometry and then it uh, calculates where it thinks the stock should be by the minimum maximum. Now, 
if you look at in this scenario here, you can see that the stock doesn't encompass all of the part. And, uh, and that has to do with the way that the bounding box, the cylindrical bounding box um, is calculated. Okay, so this is something that we did change. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if it was V30. I think it might have been V30. It could have been 29, but we did change this uh, because you can see how it doesn't incorporate all of the stock and the part. And, and there's just certain geometry sets that that will happen for, okay? So the other option you have here is called a bounding cylinder, okay? And a bounding cylinder it calculates uh, the cylinder differently. It uses a different formula. So if you find the bounding box for your cylindrical stock doesn't get all of your part geometry, uh, then you can go to the bounding cylinder and it uses a different calculation and that should get you where you need to be. Uh, you'll see your geometry options. You have auto from workspace, which means it looks at the geometry for you. Um, but you also have a pick option here. And the pick option you can use when you have multiple bodies that are on the screen. So let me cancel this for a second. Uh, you know, I'm just going to uh, draw a cube out here. You know, you might have another model over there. And, you know, maybe there's, uh, you know, a cylinder over here just as an example. So we have multiple bodies that are on our screen now. Okay, and, it, and it's common to have multiple bodies on your screen. Um, each one of these, like this cylinder or I'm sorry, this sphere is a body, this rectangle is a body, this, this part model here is a body as well, okay? So what we're looking at is we go through this stock wizard again, we've done cylindrical, okay? If we have it set by a bounding cylinder or bounding box, what it's gonna do is look at all of the part geometry that's on the screen. So, you know, what can you do? Generally, what I would do is I would isolate the geometry by layers, uh, but that takes the, the CAD preparation stage. It takes the steps of selecting the geometry and putting it on a layer. Uh, so a, a faster way of not using layers is instead of using uh, auto pick from the workspace, what you can do is choose pick geometry. And when you choose pick geometry, what you can do is select the body that you want it to look at. So you highlight it with a window, and then I'm going to use my space bar to lock in my selection. Now, even though I have multiple bodies open on the screen, I can target which body I want the stock to be generated around. Okay. Uh, if I choose pick geometry and I select this shape here, and then I hit my space bar, um, uh, it looks like I had both of them in there, so I'll do pick geometry. I'll clear my selection, window pick this guy, space bar, and now you can see we get a cylinder uh, just for that particular shape. If I do pick geometry and then I clear my selection and I just select the uh, rectangle over here and then I hit my space bar, you can see now it's just identifying that particular uh, body that I selected. So auto from the workspace looks at all the geometry that's on your screen. Uh, pick geometry allows you to pick which bodies you want to look at. Daniel had a question. How do you reset the stock definition? Um, Let's see here. Stock definition. As far as can, can you elaborate on that? Uh, if I'm going to reset the stock definition, I may cancel what I'm doing. Okay. So I have some stock set up, and I want to use a different stock. Uh, maybe we'll go to uh, we'll do stock wizard here. Maybe we want to change it to rectangular. We could change it to rectangular, and you just start the wizard all over. Okay. So you can go to the the bounding box here. Uh, you can auto pick from the workspace, all right, and then that's how you start over or reset, uh, if that makes sense. If you have more questions about that, Daniel, go ahead and fire away. All right, so what else did I want to cover? I co covered the bounding box. I covered the bounding cylinder. Uh, when you look at your geometry options here under the cylindrical stock, this one here. Okay, uh, we're going to do pick geometry. We'll grab this one. We'll do this one here. Space bar. Uh, let me do pick geometry. Clear selection. Grab this one. Space bar. Okay, we want to do a bounding cylinder. Okay, so you have auto from workspace, which picks up everything around it. You have uh, pick, which allows you to pick 
which geometry you want to work with. Now, even though we have these other bodies, and even though we have a, 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 a bounding cylinder that was calculated from our geometry, what we may want to do is come in here and edit these values. So this diameter is not a you know, a, a standard size, so we could make it a standard size based off of whatever stock that we may have, all right? So now we can adjust the size of it, all right? The other thing we can do is we can adjust the height of it. And what you'll notice is um, when you're in the, the stock definition and you're entering a value for the height, the height will always go down from the top of the job. So you'll see it, it, it's going to find the top of that geometry. And when you add to the height, like if I make this uh, 1.75, it will always go down uh, from the top of the, the part there. Okay. If you want to add more stock on the top of the part or the bottom of the part, um, you do have the ability to do some offsets. You could come in here and offset. You could come in here and adjust the diameter or of the height. Or the other thing you can do is you can also change the stock orientation. Um, this one you can see the Z is set to uh, 1. I could make it 1.1, and then that would add 100 thou on the top of the part. Okay. So we're going to get into that some more there. Uh, bounding box, bounding cylinder, auto pick pick. Um, auto from the workspace pick and then you have enter a diameter or a height. If there's any questions about that right now, go ahead and fire away. Otherwise, we're going to look at uh, some of the other settings here. Let's see. How could you, how can I choose, uh, Humberto had a question, how can I choose the center of a radius of a part such as the center of a cylinder? Um, you know, so you bring up a good question. Um, Humberto, if you wanted to, let's say, let's say that, uh, and I don't know if you're saying for the zero as such, but something that uh, you may or may not be aware of uh, when creating a, a user coordinate system, Humberto, if we come in here and uh, we go to our UCS and we right click and we say add new UCS, all right, you get a couple of different options to create a user coordinate system. Uh, if I choose a cylindrical face, uh, you're going to have two options. You have direction one and direction two. Um, if I choose direct, it's either direction one is either going to be at the top or the bottom of the cylinder. Uh, so you have two, so you can switch which one depending on what you needed. But if I wanted to set a coordinate system at the center of this cylinder, uh, at the top, if I click on this face right here, or it turned out to be the bottom, uh, but if I, if I click on that face right there, it will create a coordinate system at the center of this uh, cylindrical uh, face here, okay? If I go direction two and I repeat the process, you'll see how it will create a zero uh, right at the center of the cylinder. And uh, that geometry could be in any orientation, Humberto. Um, so it could be on a compound curve or angle, and you can set that UCS. Now, once you have that UCS, um, that UCS can be used with your stock um, uh, wizard here when you are uh, setting your stock orientation. You can uh, pick an origin. Uh, let me see here. It doesn't let you pick a UCS uh, for the stock orientation, but you could pick uh, an origin. Uh, let me see here. You could pick an origin in order to adjust uh, where the zero of that cylinder may be. Uh, the other thing you can do is you could enter your origin as well. But uh, I guess I was hoping that I would be able to pick that uh, uh, UCS uh, for my stock orientation, uh, generally speaking, you know, if it was on a compound curve, uh, what I could do is use the stock orientation to align the Z. So let me let me back up uh, just a second. So I'll back up here. All right, let me blank the stock out. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this part here and I'm going to uh, rotate it. Uh, let's do... I'm going to just put it on an irregular angle. So when I'm in a top view, you can see the part is in an in-car uh, position. Okay? Yeah, I, I agree with you, Mike. You just grab a point location, and I, and I would have it. Mike's saying, once you create the UCS, just put a point at zero, and you could use that as your origin. 
uh, which is true. So what we're going to do here is we have the part, it's on a compound curve. Uh, we're going to come in here, we're going to add a UCS, we're going to pick our cylindrical face, and then what that will do is give us a uh, coordinate system on the top. What do I got here? This one's on the bottom. That one's on the top. So I have a coordinate system on the top center of that part. If I go point coordinates zero zero, now I have a point um, at the top center of this cylinder. When I go to run my uh, stock wizard here, and I'm choosing cylindrical, uh, we're gonna do let's do uh, bounding cylinder auto from workspace. Um, what we're gonna see is that the cylinder is encompassing the part, but it's not aligned to the part. Okay, so that's where you use these stock orientation tools to align the stock to the part. Okay, so what we would do is a Z axis and we could click on one of these faces here and now that stock is gonna be aligned to that cylinder. Okay, now it doesn't, it didn't pick up the part, all of the part geometry here. Uh, I'm not sure exactly why. Uh, let's see, I have a bounding cylinder, auto from workspace. Let me go ahead and just pick the geometry uh, to make sure that it knows what I'm looking at. And what you're seeing here is I'm aligning the stock to the part, okay? Now, so that would be under the stock orientation. The stock orientation is aligned now. Uh, the next step that I would have to do is set my origin. You know, from here, this is where you can pick that UCS uh, if it was aligned properly. So that way you can align the stock to the part that's on a compound curve and you can align your setup to the part as well. So hopefully that answers your question, Humberto. Uh, probably if you're new or, or like a more entry level, uh, don't get lost on that kind of stuff. Sometimes when you're dealing with uh, part models from customers, they don't always come in uh, aligned with a plane. Uh, so that's a way that you can handle it. Uh, what I want to say is wipe away the stock definition. Um, you know, I, if you run the stock wizard, uh, Daniel, uh, it's going to retain the settings that you had from your last, uh, you know, the last time you used it. If you want to clear what your settings are here and you're going to start over, uh, there isn't a clear button. Uh, so there's two ways to do it. Either use a different type of stock and then that way you start fresh with that stock, uh, stock type or the other way to do it would be just to delete your job. Um, you delete your job, all your stock settings are swiped away. Uh, so that way when you start over, you're starting from scratch. So hopefully that makes sense for you there, Daniel. All right. So, uh, with the cylindrical stock, if there's any additional questions about that, go ahead and fire away. Um, otherwise, what we're going to do is move on to the next part file. All right. Let's see here. So we're on th uh, three. All right. See, so this, is, this is just another, uh, another example of a, a wireframe uh, geometry, probably an easier one. If we wanted to use this uh, irregular shape as our stock geometry, uh, we can create our job here. Um, we could use rectangular stock. We, we don't have to use wireframe. We could use rectangular stock. Uh, it will find using the bounding box. It's going to look at the geometry and find the minimum maximum of the part geometry. Now, uh, you know, uh, if we want to uh, use something other than the bounding box, we don't have to. If we want to use the bounding box and it auto picks from the workspace, what it will do is look at the geometry that's on the screen and then it will create a bounding box. If we choose pick geometry and we reselect our profile here, it will pick that geometry, but because it is rectangular stock, um, it's still going to give us a rectangle. Okay, so that's really the difference. It, if we're using rectangular stock and we choose pick geometry, we still get a rectangular stock even though we've selected irregular geometry. Um, if we wanted this exact profile as our stock geometry, uh, what we would choose is the wireframe stock. We'll pick that geometry. And then now we can have that irregular stock, okay? Uh, you can change where the top of the stock is by entering or picking off the screen. You can change what the, uh, the height of the stock is. The height of the stock will always move down from the top of the stock, okay? So that, that is how that works. 
Um, if there's any questions about that, go ahead and fire away. Otherwise, we're going to move on to the next file. All right, let's see what we got here for. Okay, so uh, a lot of times I talk with clients that are working with parts that are in uh, either multiple vices or they have a, a fixture plate and they have multiple bodies of stock. If you look at, um, uh, if we look at this uh, example here, we have some Mighty Bite clamps, uh, we have some multiple stock bodies, so we have um, some pins, okay, we have uh, uh, some clamps, and then we have our uh, stock bodies here. So when we're setting this job up here and we want to, you know, we want to show multiple pieces of stock uh, for simulation purposes, et cetera, uh, what option would you use here? What options? When we go to set up this job, if we use the rectangular stock, what it does is it picks up everything that's on the screen, okay? And uh, that is not the ideal scenario. Uh, we could uh, go back here, uh, we could turn the subplate off and just have the stock shapes up and move forward, and that will put a bounding box around the stock shapes, but it still isn't selecting each of the pieces of stock, so when we go to simulate, it looks like multiple pieces of stock versus one single piece of stock, okay? So we could use the pick geometry option. We could say pick geometry, and then this way, um, uh, let me window pick it all, and space bar. We could use the pick geometry option, but because it's rectangular stock, it's still going to just draw a rectangle, okay? So how do you uh, account for multiple pieces of stock, all right? Well, the way that we would do that is instead of rectangular or cylindrical uh, or wireframe, the next one we're gonna go to is the solid model stock. When you're dealing with multiple bodies of stock, uh, they may start and finish at different Z levels. That is where we're gonna use the solid model stock. So we'll go to solid model stock, we'll advance, we'll say pick solid model, uh, we can select these solid models as such. We can hit our space bar. Uh, let me go ahead and blank out that. And now you can see the software is showing um, all the independent uh, stock models that are there. Okay. Now in this example as a subplate, I mean generally you'll have a, I think I have the zero top center, uh, but you could zero it uh, wherever the zero position is for that subplate. Uh, too long junior has <laughs> too long Jr. Jr. Uh, has a question. How about or how to add roughing material to the stock size? Okay, so we'll we'll get back to um to our solid model uh, stock here. Let me uh, uh let's see what five looks like. Uh, five is revolve, so we'll get to that one in just a second. Let's go back to uh, let's go back to number two. All right, so we have this part model here. Too Long Junior says, how do I add roughing material to stock size? Well, when you run the stock wizard, whether it's rectangular or cylindrical, I'm just going to go to rectangular to keep it simple here. So I have this rectangular stock. Um, if I go from a bounding box from auto pick from the workspace, what it does is it measures your stock. Excuse me, it measures the stock for you. All right. So it measures it and it displays it right in here. So when you choose the bounding box, what it will do is measure your stock and give you these values right here. All right, so that tells you the minimum size stock that is needed in order to produce that part. And uh, you know, it may be irregular numbers. So how do you account for that? You know, what do you do to add some additional stock? Well, one of the things that you can do here is Let's go back to a pen, okay, is we can go to the enter area. And in the enter area, I may say this is actually um, 5.75 piece of stock. Uh, 5.75 piece of stock. I may say, you know, for the width, maybe it's actually three inches. And then for the height, it's one and, a, one and an eighth, okay? Uh, maybe one and an eighth isn't a normal size, but that's okay. All right, so you can see how you can adjust the size of the stock for the roughing material. Now, it's also important to understand that uh, when you enter these values here and we choose OK, if I save this file, 
if I close that file and then I open that file back up, right? If I come back into my stock settings, it will retain these numbers. That is important. Uh, so that way, if you leave and you come back, it will remember the stock size that you had. So one way to do it is to enter the length, width, and height of the stock that you want to use. Now, Richard has a question. Well, hey, um, or let me see here. Uh, in the solid model, Mighty Byte example, can you add stock to all the solids? No, Richard. When you're dealing with a solid model stock, you can't add stock to the solid. You would have had a drawn the solid model stock to size. Okay, Daniel has a question. Is it possible to use the offset option with the wireframe? Um, it is, I believe it is. We'll go back and check that one real quick. Uh, Gary has a question. Is there a library that has the pins and or the Mighty Bytes? Uh, I'm sorry, uh, that's Grant. Grant, you can download the, the Mighty Bytes from MightyByte.com uh, from their website. They have a download there. John has a question. How do you center the part after you make the stock larger okay so so we got a couple things there first thing is when you're dealing with the stock definition you can enter the value let's say you don't want to enter the value let's say that you just want to add offsets to it okay how can you add offsets well that that's in this section down here okay you'll see this um, on a, a lot of these options here is to be able to add these offsets here so you can add offsets in uh, X, Y, or Z. So let me erase all of these. Let me uh, cancel this. Uh, let's go to that. Let's cancel this. Let me change my uh, transparency setting. Let's uh, turn, this, uh, turn this up so it's a little easier to see the stock. Let me zoom in a little bit for you guys. Okay. So if we look at control one, top view, uh, control two, front view. So this is what we're looking at with our stock right now. Uh, if we come over to the stock wizard again, all right, we look at um, our offsets here. We can offset, you know, you can add an offset, uh, positive and negative X, positive and negative Y. Uh, if you want to add stock to the bottom, you could add stock to the bottom. If you want to add stock to the top, you could add stock to the top, okay? So if you're looking at adding stock around uh, the part model, you can do so with um, with the offset settings here. Now, there was another uh, question that had to do with the wireframe. Let's get the wireframe one up here. Can you add stock with the wireframe? Uh, let's go to three. Okay, so we have an irregular shape here. You come in, you're trying to uh, use the wireframe stock. You pick geometry, you select your stock. You space bar. Now you're saying, well, I wanted to add stock around the irregular shape here. Uh, uh, let's see here. Who was it? Uh, uh, Daniel asked this question. Okay, well, Daniel, you're, when you're picking wireframe stock, the wireframe would represent the stock that you wanted to use. So if you needed to add an offset to it, there's no options for the offset in here. Um, what you would do is do an offset to that geometry itself, okay? So you could add an offset to there, uh, you know, maybe 50 thou or whatever it might be. Uh, choose OK, cancel. So now when you go to pick up this stock here, wireframe stock, pick geometry, select that offset of geometry, and that's how you can do that. Let's see. Um, okay, so... Uh, we okay, so we're good there. How about John's? Uh, how do you center the part after you make the stock larger? Okay, so centering the part, you know, has to do with a, another section of this. So let's let's back up just a second. Okay, so we're gonna go through. Let's go. Let's go back to this one here. All right. So we're gonna run the stock wizard. Okay, we're gonna use the bounding box. I've added some additional offsets here. Okay. Um, this is under the stock definition. There's three parts here. There's the stock type, the stock definition, and the machine setup, okay? So when you're in the stock definition, you're just telling the size of the stock. Now, whether you use the bounding box, uh, whether you auto-pick from the work workspace, whether you pick additional bodies um, from the workspace, whether you enter the, the size of the stock or you use your offsets, what you're doing is establishing the stock, okay? Once you have the stock established, 
Um, this is under the stock definition. The next part that you have is the machine setup, okay? And in the machine setup, this is where you're gonna set your zero position. Now, by default, we'll throw points up on the screen at the top, middle, and bottom of your part, so it makes it easy to pick where you need to be, okay? If you wanna be on the center of the part, you click origin, and you can snap right to the center of the part. If you wanna be in the back left-hand corner, you click origin, and then you can snap to the back left-hand corner of the part. If you want to be on the, the front uh, middle section here, okay, so we can go origin, and we can snap right to that position there. If you want to be, uh, you know, on this face of the part, okay, maybe you need to be on this face of the part. You click origin, you snap to the face that you want to be on, and then what you need to do is align your axis. So I'll align my y-axis to this direction. I will reverse that direction. So now I have x going this way and y going that way. All right. So the first part is the stock type. The second part is the stock definition. The third part is the machine setup. And when you're in the machine setup, that's where you can pick where your zero is going to be. Um, can you get the holes in the stock by picking them when picking the wireframe. Can you get the holes in the stock? Uh, let's go back, let's, it's a, a good question. So stock wizard, wireframe, pick geometry. We'll select uh, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, space bar, and you, yes, the answer is yes. Yes, you can get uh, the holes in the stock by picking them as well. Uh, John, how do you center the part after you make the stock larger? Uh, if you need more explanation on that, John, let, let me know. Uh, Vic had the question about the holes there. Uh, I always need to zero on the bottom of the stock. Can I make this a default? Uh, no, you cannot make it a default uh, because the bottom of the stock uh, could be a variety of different, uh, it could be in a variety of different places. Door, door? Heyman, I'm not sure how to say that. Uh, but so you can't set that as a default. Um, if you want to set the bottom of the stock there, you can go origin and you can pick where that uh, bottom of stock would be and then choose OK. If we're over in this part here and we want to set our zero on the bottom of the stock, uh, we can actually just go to our machine setup location, go to origin. Uh, we can snap to the bottom of the stock. And again, you just want to make sure your Z is aligned with Z in the proper direction and that you have your X and Y uh, going in the direction that makes sense for that setup. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense for you there too. We got about 10 minutes left. Um, you know, uh, again, rectangular stock, you have, uh, let me kind of run through, make sure I have all my topics covered here today. Uh, under rectangular stock, you have a bounding box. You can auto pick uh, different shapes from the workspace. So let's, uh, let's look at that again. Let's go back to number four here where we have uh, a couple of, uh, bodies of stock. We're going to do uh, stock wizard, rectangular stock next. Uh, the bounding box will look at the geometry that's on the screen and it will, uh, if it's auto from workspace, it will pick uh, based off of the minimum maximum of geometry needed or of stock needed in order to accomplish everything that's on the workspace. If we go to pick and we choose pick geometry, um, this would let us uh, pick uh, different uh, bodies that we might want to work with, uh, but it does, when you choose pick from a workspace, it is still rectangular, so it um, it can end up uh, uh, drawing, uh, creating a rectangle for it. Really what I was expecting is just one of these to get picked up here, uh, so I'm not sure why I'm getting more than one, uh, but sometimes that happens. All right, let's go like this. Uh, Pick work, oh, I gotta clear my selection. Pick workpiece, clear. Okay, I don't have anything. Let's just select this one here. Space bar, perfect. I have just this one, okay? Pick workpiece, let me clear my selection. I'm gonna select maybe this one and this one, okay? By selecting the two, because it's rectangular, it's gonna do the entire shape, okay? What would you use uh, pick geometry from versus auto from workspace for rectangular stock? If you had a, a few different uh, geometry sets that were on the screen and you wanted to focus just on one of them, 
uh, you can do that. It is important to clear your selection first, and then you could grab just one of them. All right. Let's see here. You have um, you have your enter values here, so you can enter the size of the stock. Uh, after it's selected, so it'll tell you how big it is, and then you can add stock in length, in width, or in height. When you add stock in height, uh, what it does is it will go down uh, in Z. Okay, if you want to add stock to the top, you can use an offset here as such, so you could add stock to the top. If you want to add stock in uh, X and Y, you could either enter the values here or you could use your offsets. All right, uh, stock orientation is used to orientate the stock if it is click not oink uh, okay uh, Al if you pick the bottom corner of a part uh, you would still have to change the clearance plane to uh, uh, clearance plane so that the tool doesn't crash into the top of the part um, no, uh, you you sh you shouldn't have to uh, change the clearance plane because there is some logic built into there, uh, Brian. Where even if you set the bottom apart at zero, that clearance plane will look at the top of the part and make the clearance one inch above. I believe that is the case. I will have to check that. Erwin has a question. It seems that machine setup. I need quarter turn, but cannot do it. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by a quarter turn. It seems that the machine setup I need a quarter turn, but cannot do it. So I'm not uh, sure. That's the origin. Oh, how do you uh, how do you turn the origin? Um, you know, again, uh, the way that you would uh, turn the origin is you'll use your axis. So you could select your x-axis. And then you could select your y-axis, and you make sure that those two are pointing the right direction. And that is how that works there. Okay, so uh, let me back up for a second. Uh, let me get back into this part file here. We're going to run the stock wizard, rectangular stock. You have your bounding box. It looks at the part geometry, puts a box around it. Auto pick from workspace means it looks at what's on the screen. Pick geometry allows you to pick a body or a group of bodies that you want to focus on, okay? Uh, the enter value allows you to enter the size of stock that you're working with. Uh, you can add additional offsets in X and Y, and anything you add to Z would go down in Z. Uh, if you want to add additional offsets, you can use the offset values here. Um, if you need to align the stock to the part, you can use the stock orientation tools. Um, when we get to the next section here, under the machine setup, this is where you pick your zero. Uh, something that is very useful, and I do use this quite a bit, this is a, a pro tip for you guys. Um, this bounding box, we don't have a bounding box CAD feature, uh, but we do have a bounding box in the stock wizard. Uh, how I've been converting this over is I'll choose measure entity, and I'll click on that, and that will put the bounding box um, on that layer there okay so sometimes that's very useful uh, when you're continuing to um, set up the part or you're dealing with part flips and things like that okay all right very good now the other one that we had here is this cylindrical stock I'm gonna go to the cylindrical stock here cylindrical stock is for round stock the bounding box will look at the part geometry and calculate a cylinder around it depending on your part geometry it may not encompass all of your part which is why we have a bounding cylinder it uses some different math and that math will make sure that your part fits inside of the cylinder um, you can uh, auto pick auto from workspace or you could pick geometry if you have multi bodies you can also uh, edit the diameter uh, if your part is on a compound curve you can use the stock orientation to align the stock to the part and if you need to add additional offsets you can use your offset uh, here, the additional offsets would be used for additional material that you may need to remove. All right, so that covers that one there. Uh, let's go back to, let's say, three here. Uh, if you're using wireframe stock, it's when you have a wireframe that represents your stock geometry. Using the wireframe stock, you can pick your geometry. So you pick, uh, let me... Uh, just pick this outside shape here and this will get you irregular geometry if you need any additional stock in X and Y you would need to offset your geometry first um, after you've done that you can set up your zero uh, let's see here so that gives us the first 
let's see, one, two, three. Solid model stock, let's go to four. Uh, solid model stock here is when you have multiple stock bodies. They could have different Z levels. In this example, I'm using a, a fixture plate and I want to be able to simulate all the stock bodies. I'll choose solid model. I'll pick model and then I can pick multiple bodies that represent uh, the stock that I'm working with. Okay, so that's when you would use solid model. Now, there are uh, two additional stocks here. There's STL and revolved. Uh, STL generally I'm going to use for in-process stock when I've run a simulation and then uh, I want to use that simulated stock as um, you know maybe I turned apart and then I want to use that turn stock in a milling routine or maybe I uh, turned apart and milled apart and then I'm wiring apart and you want to pass the in-process stock from one machine setup or one uh, one job to another job is generally where I'll use STL. Uh, the only thing different with STL is you, you grab it from a directory and then you do have to set the unit of the STL, whether it's millimeters or in inches, okay? Other than that, it works the same as the solid model stock. The last one that I have here is uh, called a, a revolved, uh, let me get rid of that, uh, it's called a, uh, Revolve stock, so we'll use revolve stock here. Uh, revolve stock is if you have part stock that's round. In this case, I have a, a profile of the part, so I'm gonna choose uh, pick geometry and I'll select this and then I'll hit my space bar. Now, uh, you know, a lot of times with revolve stock, people can get confused. Uh, the reason being is uh, the stock orientation uh, right now, the stock orientation, you can see the Z is pointing up, so it's revolving it uh, this way. I need it to revolve around the X axis uh, along one of these lines here. So what I'm going to do is choose Z direction, and I just click this line here. That would represent a line parallel to the axis of rotation, and then now you can see you have your revolve stock. Okay, so those are your six types of stock in different ways that you can use them. We have a few minutes left. If there's any uh, additional questions that you guys may have, uh, we can go ahead and get into it. Uh, do I have to rotate the workpiece to place the UCS on the bottom of the cor of course with the Z on the top? Uh, you don't need to rotate the UCS, Daniel. You can use the UCS um, as an origin and you can use the stock orientation uh, to align the part. So if you wanted, as part of your CAD preparation, if you wanted to create a UCS that you wanted to use uh, for your zero, you could do so. Because uh, when you get to the machine setup stage, um, when you're going to pick your origin, you'll see this option. Uh, so we're in the machine setup. We're looking at the origin. Instead of picking the origin, you can use this section right here, which says pick from UCS, and that would allow you to use one of the UCSs that you may have already established, okay? So that's how that works there. If you have more questions about that, uh, please let me know. Let's see, Grant has a question. Please demonstrate an extrude hole that has a larger ID slot midway. In other words, a bore hole uh, two by one tall with a, uh, a quarter inch slot, which is uh, two and a half diameter. Um, yeah, I mean, I can, if, if you want me to go through that with you together, uh, Grant, we can do that on a one-on-one -on -one demo. Uh, that way we can go through it together. Really, it's it's just taking one at a time and, and, and going through the steps. Uh, let's see here, Mike. So the STL from the SIM is used as in process stock. Yes, Mike, that's exactly correct. Uh, you can use the STL uh, that you can export from the simulation as your in process stock. Good pick up there. Let's see, can, uh, can you show an example of an STL? I don't have an STL file uh, set up, Ken. Uh, it's basically just selecting a file uh, a file from a directory and that's it. It works the same as a solid model, except instead of picking it from your workspace, uh, you can pick it from a directory. Tom has a question, does Bobcat have a tool to rotate an imported CAD file to the top view for milling and turning? I'm thinking of moving the CAD instead of creating a UCS. Um, it does, Tom, it does not have a, a translate function 
uh, to take a part from in-car position and move it to zero. Uh, typically, we're going to create a UCS versus moving the part. I can move the part, uh, but if it's on a compound curve, I'm going to have to move it uh, two rotations versus just one. Thomas has a question. Five-sided part from four raw sides and flat stock. How do I carry each function to the next without multiple files? Um, compound angled finish required. Uh, Tom, I'd rather deal with that with you one-on-one. -on -one. I don't have quite enough time to go through that with you. If you'd like to set up a demo, uh, you can always email me at al, al at bobcad.com. It is the two, uh, 205 mark here. Um, so I do really want to uh, thank everybody for spending some time on the phone uh, with me here today, spending some time going through uh, today's webinar. I think it's been uh, yes, Michael, you can email me a question. Again, my email is al, al at bobcad.com. You know, I, again, I want to give a, a big thank you to everybody. And again, don't forget with Bobcad, you can expect fewer steps, better cuts, and more profit. Until next week's webinar, next week we're looking at um, – what do we have set up? Next week, it looks like five types of drilling and how to use them. That should be a good one. Next Wednesday at uh, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. A big thank you for everybody that spent some time with me here today. Thank you, John. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Grant. Uh, thank you, Michael. Um, again, if there's some topics that we weren't able to get into, uh, feel free to email me any files that you may have or any questions. Uh, it'd be great to help you guys through anything that you may be working on. Other, otherwise, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next webinar. Uh, thank you so much.